So iPadOS 26 is a game changer because it makes your iPad feel much more like a computer than it has before. But there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve, especially if you are using a previous iPad. For example, did you know that you can grab this window, flick it to the left, grab this window over here, flick it to the other side, and now you're into split view without ever actually having to change anything, or the fact that if I bring up my dock up here, I have a fan folder that shows up exactly what's on my iCloud desktop. There's a bunch of nuanced different changes from gesture controls, shortcuts, and how to set up your iPad on iPadOS 26 that I want to go over. So let's talk about exactly how I'm setting up my iPad for success and to use it more like a desktop. Let's get into it. So everyone, let's start off with the lock screen and home screen setup and how I kind of laid everything out to make it easy for me to kind of get into what I need to get into. There isn't much difference here with the lock screen. The new thing here is going to be the customizable size of the time, as well as being able to use the backdrop a little bit more efficiently. Now this is a game of cat and mouse here in terms of how you have to play with it and stuff like that in order to get the perfect look. But there's two main things here to consider that are brand new. First is this kind of new parallax effect that you could see with that first feature here. And then the second one where you can kind of move the iPad around because it's using spatial photos and Apple intelligence. Again, the whole point of Apple intelligence is to work in the background ideally, but it has this kind of cool parallax effect where it makes it, where it kind of brings the four or the subject to the foreground and the background kind of stays stagnant and you can kind of move it around. And then of course with the landscapes, you can kind of try to hide stuff behind. But for instance, let's go with uh, something simple like this one, right? This one, you can see that you have the larger time when it comes to generating the spatial scene. This is the only font you can get for the larger time, but you can see that it does hide behind the spatial scene or behind the subject. So that is a new kind of form of it. And if I kind of move the iPad around, you can kind of see that it is moving around as well, keeping me static and moving the background around. So you can kind of peek and kind of see things like that. And I'll show you maybe in a future video that you can do that with pretty much any photo, even old photos, as long as there's a clear subject in a clear background, there's an option in iPadOS and iOS 26 to create this effect. But this is what's new with the actual lock screen. And I just like to keep it simple. You saw that I had it before, but just know if you do want this kind of larger and elongated one, you do need to go with the only first font. The first font is the only one that allows you to kind of resize, open it up, make it bigger. You can see that you do it with this little tab right here, smaller, bigger. And again, you can see that stuff is moving around. It's a little bit wonky because again, we're on beta one. Technically there was like a beta one a update or beta one B update, but again, we're still in beta one, but that is a lock screen. So I'm going to press cancel because I like the lock screen that I have going on right now. We can swipe away and this is my current lock screen. Very simple. I just have the, the status of the weather up there and my time behind this beautiful backdrop. And then you swipe up and go into my home screen. Now you can see here that the home screen had a cool little effect here. That's very new where everything kind of just bounced into place. So let's quickly talk about the home screen and how I've laid it out personally. Again, this is all subjective and how you kind of want to set it up for yourself. But if you do long press, you still have the options you had with iPadOS 18, but everything's a little bit more when it comes to customization. So first and foremost, what I like to do is go over here, go to the customize section, and this is going to be the kind of newest section or the amplified section where you can use the new clear toggle. So again, you have your tinted version, which is going to be there to match up against your background. You have your dark version, you have your default, Again, you have your dark to always an auto, but I like to have it on clear because that's going to be the new one and the one that's going to draw the most attention, at least for now. And the one that I just want to play with to see how it evolves throughout the betas. As you can see, the first party widgets and applications are ready to go. So you can see the FaceTime and Safari and things like, you know, the Apple HomeKit app and even the widgets themselves, like the weather app up here, they look good to go. While others, for instance, the YouTube app is still a little bit weird. There's some of them look better than others. The ChatGPT one still kind of just looks like a white one instead of a clear one. But some things that I like to do here first is I like to use the large icons on my iPad to get rid of the icon names because I just feel like it makes everything a little bit cluttered. This little dimmer, I like to keep the dimmer on when I am using the clear icons because it adds a little bit more contrast in order to see what's going on. And that's what I do from that customization standpoint. And then over here, I have a couple sub stacks over here or widget stacks. This widget one stays the same. This one is for GBT as well as my status when it comes to Slack. I also have my YouTube search here some HomeKit stuff, as well as this is again, a widget that I'm dealing with that is in beta. This is a co-pilot widget to help me with budgeting, with personal finance. But again, we're in the beta program, so some widgets are a little bit wonky. I have my Apple Car balance down there, and that's what I have from a widget standpoint. And then over here, I have my big three applications that I use every single day. So I have Affinity Photo to edit my thumbnails. 
Lumafusion to edit my videos, and then Blackmagic Camera App, which I'm actually using with another iPad right now. So I can use it as a viewfinder when I am recording these videos with A-Roll. So that is my home screen setup. And then one huge thing that was added with iPadOS 26 has to be these two down here. So now if you go into the Files application, if you open up any file, you can actually move this over. And what I like to do here is, for instance, I use my iCloud desktop for everything. I kind of, I'll edit a photo in Affinity Photo, then save it into my iCloud desktop so it's accessible from all my devices at all times. So what I did here was actually added my iCloud desktop to my lock screen or to my dock actually. And if I press on this, it does fan out nicely. And the way that you do that is you right click on any file anywhere in your iPad, go all the way to the bottom where it says add to, you can add it to your favorites and then add it to your dock. So let's open up a different one here because obviously I have that one. But for instance, if I want to add this bound one, add it, add it to dock, go down here. I now have my downloads, which I've added before, my desktop and my bound also down here. You can right click on here to have your options, remove it from the dock, open it, grid, fan, whatever you see fit. And we're going to remove that from the dock. And I know that a lot of people actually like the grid view. So if I go down here and press on it, I actually have the grid view down here to make me be able to open this up a little bit easier. So that file system being able to be in my dock is something that I absolutely love and use every single day. And that right there makes it feel way more like a computer than it ever did before. So I quickly want to go over the windowing system briefly to let you guys know how to navigate it because there are a few new gestures and controls that people need to get familiar with. And there is a little bit of a learning curve, especially if you are used to using something like Stage Manager from iPadOS 18. Some of the ways that you open these applications in these windows are a little bit different and they don't work the same. So let's start off from scratch here and just open up a couple of Safari windows so you guys are aware of how to navigate this. If I, you know, Apple T to open up a new tab, I can have multiple Safari windows open at the same time, resize them how I see fit. And of course, the first thing you're going to notice here is that you have the traffic like design to X out to minimize and as well to enlarge in. Now, if you hover over, don't click and you stay hovered over, you do get some ability to resize, retile, kind of use some predetermined sizing for these applications and these windows to make it a little bit easier for you to navigate and view everything that's going on. You can do three side by side, you can do split view, you can go full screen and same thing goes for the horizontal view as well. And then another thing that I do want to mention is that you used to have to actually grab the application, hold it down and move it into the window in order for it to actually open up versus now you just have to click on it. So if I just click on an application, it'll go directly into windowing mode. And now, like I said, if you do want to go into that tiling system, just hover over or click over and then you just tap on this and then boom, you have your tiling system right here. And then you also this also acts as kind of like a multi split view so you can grab your finger and move these to the side because horizontally they are split up and you can use that same split view kind of UI, which is also great. And then another couple of new gestures that you should definitely learn is if you just swipe up normally. So if you were to normally swipe up from a full screen application to go to your home screen, you just swipe up and you go into this new fan view. So you can see that the applications are still there on the side. And if you want to open up another application, you can do that. And that's what this is there for. It's for you to open an application that might not be on your dock, but it's on your home screen and it's something that you do want to open up. So for instance, if I want to open up, let's say the preview application, I can now do that directly from there because I swiped up. So if I swipe up here, same thing applies. You can do this with the 12 applications. But now if you actually just truly want to go back to your home screen, you swipe up then and then you just swipe up again and then it gets rid of everything and it fans it away and it goes back to your home screen. And then to bring those back up, you just go into multitasking and tap on one of these. If I open up this, you're gonna have to slowly bring them back one by one, which is something that might be changing in the future. I'll have to kind of keep a group together similar to how they did it with Stage Manager. And then to slowly bring it back in, you just have to go into multitasking, tap into these, and then they'll slowly start to come in. And you can see if you swipe up and hold, the same way you go into multitasking, you enter this expose view. And again, this is how you get a view of all the different applications that are open and kind of what their sizes are relative to the relative to the other windows in this. And you can tap on whichever one you want to bring it to the forefront to be your main one. So that's always great to see. The management of this does become second nature and it gets a little bit easier, but it's just a little bit of a learning curve that I think for me is definitely for the better. Another way to bring up multiple applications is with a simple spotlight search. So if you press command space and type in whatever you want. So if I want to open up a Chrome window, I just type in Chrome, tap on it. And now that Chrome window is open in this current view with all these different windows open together. And now another cool one that a lot of people are a little bit worried about because again, they lost slide over and they think split view is gone is if you grab your finger and just kind of flick it to one side, grab another window and flick it to the other side, you are now in split view mode. And this works with any application in any situation. So all you have to do is grab them and, and kind of flick them off to the side and it uses inertia. And then fortunately it also works with the mouse and trackpad. So if I go into here and let's say I want to open up this window right here, 
and if I grab it and use enough inertia and flick it up, it'll go into that split view mode as well. So this does work depending on if you're using your finger or your trackpad. It's much easier using your actual finger to touch and do this, but it's good to know that it still works with the trackpad. And the last quick shortcut that I wanted to bring up is the first thing I tested actually was to see if Apple Q worked to quit out of an application to kind of get rid of some space over here. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. But if you press Command W, it does start to close off all the windows one by one. So it'll start to close them out. If I press on here, it'll close this one. If I press on here, it'll close this and this. If I go to preview, it'll close the preview. If I go into Safari, it'll close Safari. So it does, Apple W kind of acts as your Apple Q and it does quit them out completely. Because if I try to go into multitasking, those applications are gone. So just be aware of that, that Apple W closes out all of these. And if an application has multiple tabs, it'll close the tabs one by one before it closes out the entire application. So something to take note of. And then finally, the last one that I wanted to bring up for quick switching is gonna be Command Tab, which just brings up the view here for you to have to go to the home screen or go to whichever application you want. And it's easy to allow you to switch in between them because the one gesture where you would swipe on the bottom of the screen on the home bar, it would not into switching between applications is no longer there. So they did get rid of slide over and they got rid of that one. But again, there's different ways to actually get the same exact function done. It's just a matter of learning a few extra steps or a new step in order to get that done. Another quick question that I get all the time is going to be how to customize your mouse. So again, you have the normal customization. So if I go into general, if you scroll down, you go to trackpad, you can change up your trackpad speed, your natural scrolling, your tap to click, your two fingers to get your right click, and also get some system haptics. And this is where I have it set up and I'm very happy with the speed and the control that I get here. But to get some extra customization, for instance, you see that I have that red outline on the track or on the actual mouse pointer itself. If you go to accessibility, Scroll down to where it says accessories, scroll down to where it says pointer control, tap into here, and then here you have some additional settings for your mouse pointer. For instance, you can increase the contrast or decrease it if you want to, automatically hide the pointer, so if you aren't using it or if you aren't using the trackpad, it'll go away. I don't like that, I like to be able to see where it's at exactly. You can change the size of the pointer, so if you can see, look, this is as big as you can go if you really want to. I keep it as small as it can go just because I like the minimal look of it. You can also change the color of the outline, so I can change the border width, for instance, to make it as small or as thick as I want. I kind of like to keep it in the middle. Also, look how cool that UI is. And then secondly, you can turn it completely off. So this is what it looks like normally if you really want to. But I've always had the red outline. I don't really know why, but I've had it since iPadOS 13, since like the trackpad or mouse kind of came out to be. So I'm just going to keep it as is. You can also ignore the trackpad, double tap to drag, trackpad inertia, do the pointer animations, and then you can also readjust your scrolling speed. So again, a lot more customization, and you can even customize it even more so through assistive touch. But maybe that'll be for a future video because then this one will get way too long. And now the last thing I do want to bring up is going to be audio management because it's got a lot easier. So for example, if you open up something like the voice memos application, so we'll press our command space, type in the voice memos, you now have an option here in your control center. If you tap into control center, you're going to get this new highlighted option. And this highlighted option lets you decide where the microphone is coming from. So for instance, if I tap in here, you can do the Sure microphone, same as system, which is a Sure microphone. I'm gonna leave it as is because I am actively recording the screen recording directly on the iPad with my Sure microphone, which I have right here, plugged in and ready to go. And then you also have some different standards or different kind of customizations when it comes to the microphone that we got in previous iterations of iOS, but it came to the built-in microphone during phone calls. We can go with standard, automatic, voice isolation, high spectrum. And again, this is gonna be on an app-by-app -app basis, but the fact that we can now decide which microphone is going to be in there and being used is amazing. Whereas previously with different iOS and iPadOS iterations, you would have to plug it in and make sure that it was recognized correctly, do a couple of tests to make sure that it wasn't just going to be a complete watch when you were voice recording, and then that you were actually using the correct piece of hardware for whatever you needed for in that software. So being able to manage that directly on the iPad, directly from Control Center, it's something that I never saw coming and I'm very happy that they brought that over. Now I'm just hoping they can give us two audio sources to be able to play two different audio sources directly from my iPad. But again, we'll probably wait for iPad OS 30 for that to come out. So again, there's an abundance of different changes and nuanced things that are happening with iPad OS 26. And hopefully this video kind of helps shed some light and open up the floodgates a little bit for those people that are on beta one. Again, we're on developer beta one, so it is a little bit buggy. I haven't lost anything crazy from a data standpoint, but there have been a couple springboard resets, especially when I am using extended monitor support. Some applications are still a little bit wonky. So definitely install your own risk, but just know that eventually everybody will get it. The public beta should be around in July. 
and the final release will come out in the fall when Apple has their big iPhone announcement. But that'll do for this video. Leave a comment down below if you've learned something new with iPadOS 26, if you do have it installed, and if you're going to be trying it out in the future. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and checking out one of these videos right here because again, iPadOS 26, this is just the beginning of how powerful this iPad is finally going to be now that it's unlocked by good software. Till next time, peace.